dozens of people are searching for a missing hiker in the 21 gorge. 21-year-old Riley Zickel set out on an overnight hike by himself. Colorado County Sheriff's Office is searching for a missing hiker on the Olympic Peninsula. Don and Trevor Higgins. The father and son were last seen Friday. They disappeared while hunting near Bear Camp Road above Agnes. 21-year-old Riley Zickel, the senior at Lewis and Clark College, and disappeared. And plea from friends of a woman who is missing right now in the Skamania County wilderness. She's 19 years old, Maureen Kelly. Searchers are looking for a 76-year-old farmer who did not come back from mushroom hunting near Grangeville. Hello and welcome to the Pacific Northwest Missing Persons Project. I'm your host, Tanner Hoskins, Executive Director here at PNWMPP. And before we get into this week's episode, I want to share a quick update about what our team at Pacific Northwest Bigfoot Search is doing. Our team has an exciting announcement coming. We can't go into details, but for now, I'll leave you with this little hint of things to come. There are big projects and announcements on the horizon for our team, both in regards to the Pacific Northwest Bigfoot Search Team and the PNW MPP team. We are working with a film crew based here in the Pacific Northwest on an exciting project that will air on a major outdoor television network and on a major streaming service later next year. Accompanying that information, I am proud to announce that this podcast has officially surpassed 10,000 listens, with most of those listens occurring since December of 2023. PNWMPP podcast is averaging about 1,400 listens each month and growing month over month. I cannot thank you all enough for helping our podcast and our nonprofit continue to grow. Now, many of you write in asking how you can assist us on our mission and how you can donate to our field operations. If you're interested in donating to our nonprofit, you can do so in a variety of ways. The first way and the easiest way is to text PNWMPP to 44321. This will provide you a link to our Give Lively donation page, where you can provide a secure donation that is completely tax-deductible. The other way is to visit our website, www.pnwmpp.org, and provide a donation securely through PayPal or by writing us a check and mailing it to the address on our website. With all of that being said, let's get into this week's episode. This week, we are diving into the strange and unsettling disappearances of two men, both from the same area in Montana, both within days of each other. First, we're going to talk about Curtis Austin Holman. Curtis was a 31-year-old man, towering at 6'5", weighing about 210 pounds. On July 22nd of 1984, Curtis left his Missoula, Montana home, intending to change the battery on his 1976 Toyota pickup. Before he left home, he promised his girlfriend that they'd meet the next day for a movie date. But Curtis never showed up, and he hasn't been seen or heard from since. Two weeks later, a man picking berries near Placid Lake, Montana, about 58 miles from Curtis's home, stumbled upon something strange. Curtis's Toyota pickup truck. It was abandoned on the side of an old logging road. Inside the vehicle, a forest map lay open across the seat. Curtis's glasses and wallet were still in the truck, but the keys were gone. Oddly enough, there were no signs of a struggle, at least none that law enforcement could find. It seemed like Curtis had simply shut the door to his vehicle and vanished into thin air. It is believed that Curtis might have been scouting lakes for an upcoming hiking trip with his brother, which made the location of his truck all the more concerning. A massive search was launched in the area, and searchers found boot prints matching Curtis's shoe size, but these prints were intertwined with grizzly bear tracks. Yet, there was another clue, a possible sighting. About 20 miles from where Curtis's truck was found, Someone thought they saw Curtis near a Girl Scout camp, but no more leads came in and the trail soon went cold. Some people believe Curtis may have disappeared voluntarily, perhaps to take his own life. Curtis had gone through divorce recently and according to his brother, 
Curtis appeared to be distant at their last get-together. Others think that Curtis may have been the victim of a bear attack, especially given the grizzly sightings in the area around that time. But there's yet another theory, a darker, more sinister one, that involves a connection to the disappearance of another man, Father John Kerrigan. Father Kerrigan, a Roman Catholic priest, vanished two days before Curtis did. The 58-year-old priest had just moved to Ronan, Montana to start a new job at Sacred Heart Church. He was last seen jogging on July 20th of 1984 after stopping inside a local bakery. That was the last time anyone saw him. Father Kerrigan never showed up to deliver his first sermon at his new job at the Sacred Heart Church. A few days later, About 14 miles from where Father Kerrigan was last seen, a woman found his bloody clothes. His shirt, shoes, and jacket were discovered near a fruit stand. Two men, both missing from the same general area, within days of each other. Could it be a coincidence? Or is there more to this? Now, Father Kerrigan had a history that raised eyebrows. In 1983, a year before his disappearance, Father Kerrigan spent three months at the Congregation of the Servants at Paraclete in New Mexico, a retreat for priests struggling with personal difficulties, including sexual misconduct. And in 2011, Father Kerrigan was named in a lawsuit involving allegations of sexual abuse by members of the Catholic Diocese in Helena, Montana. Now, here's where things get even stranger. It's not just between Curtis and Father Kerrigan. There's a third case. Two years earlier, on June 13th of 1982, an Episcopal priest named James Anderson went missing from Townsend, Montana, and was never found. Father Anderson and Father Kerrigan knew each other. They had worked together at a parish in White Sulphur Springs, Montana. With three missing persons, two of whom just days apart from one another, the mind races as to the possible connections between at least those two. Yet no evidence exists to suggest these cases are in any way connected. In no way am I suggesting that Curtis Holman was a suspect in these cases. I'm just wondering if Curtis may have been in the wrong place at the wrong time when Father Kerrigan was likely murdered. How many times have we heard from convicted serial killers that they were almost caught while either dumping a body or shortly after committing a homicide? The Green River Killer, for example, stated many times that he was approached by hikers, boaters, and passers-by shortly after committing a homicide or while in the middle of attempting to dump a body. It could also be that Curtis had an unfortunate accident or a freak encounter with a wild animal traversing in the area of Placid Lake. So what happened to Curtis Holman, Father Kerrigan, and Father Anderson? Could their disappearances be part of a larger, more chilling pattern? Was foul play involved, or are these coincidences exactly that? Unfortunate coincidences in a vast and wild landscape. All three of these are mysteries that remain unsolved, with more questions than there are answers. So, what are your thoughts? Write in to us and let us know. You can send us an email at info at pnwmpp.org, or you can comment on any of our social media where this episode is posted. As always... If you find yourself planning to recreate in any of the areas mentioned in this week's episode, or you plan to recreate in the Pacific Northwest at all, please visit our website, www.pnwmpp.org, and get to know the descriptions of those who are missing in the area that you plan to visit. You never know when you may locate something that brings answers or closure to a grieving family. Thank you.